Okay, boys and girls, these are lessons three and four on ratios. More specifically, equivalent ratios. What is an equivalent ratio? How do we find equivalent ratios? One thing I'm gonna say is you know you can write a ratio like a fraction. And if you know how to find equivalent fractions, then you know how to find equivalent ratios. That's why understanding fractions is so important. So what is an equivalent ratio? Well, it is two different ratios that are equivalent. So you can um, create um, a bigger scenario or you can simplify the bigger scenario to a more simplified um, scenario. Just sounds just like fractions, doesn't it? So basically we're saying that it's two different sets of numbers, obviously. So A to B is equal to C to D. And if you can't tell that that's an equal sign, if you were listening to my words, you would know that that is an equal sign and not fast forwarding the video. But, so there is ways that we can represent a ratio. And then we could also use the same tape diagram to create an equivalent tape diagram or an equivalent ratio. It's super cool, super easy, and it looks almost identical to the bar models that I'm quite fond of, okay? So we have Shani, 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 and we have Mel. So um, in this scenario, the, um, the tape diagram shows us that the ratio between Shani and Mel, not quite sure what the specific information is at this point, but we know that Shani has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to Mel's one, two, three. So the ratio is seven to three. This is a part to part ratio. So if we wanted, oh, see, here is what our data is. This is where we get very specific. Let me move this up for you guys. This is where we get very specific with our ratios, okay? So I'll move this up as far as possible to make this, doesn't look too sideways, does it? So our data, okay, that goes along with our tape diagram. Here's our original data. The length of Shani's ribbon in inches is seven, and the length of Mel's ribbon in inches is three. So the length of Shani's ribbons to Mel's ribbons is seven inches to three inches. And that is why the tape diagram looks the way that it does. So this is the data that goes with the tape diagram. And then, when we talked in lessons one and two, as we move down the column, we look at the relationship that's happening to the ratio. So if I take seven and double it, or multiply it by two, it becomes 14. So whatever I did to Shani's number by multiplying it by two, I have to do the same thing to Mel's number, multiply it by two, and I get an equivalent ratio. So this ratio is seven to three. If I multiply the seven by two and the three by two, my equivalent ratio becomes 14 to six. This is how you make a very easy, simple, or equivalent tape diagram ratio. You draw it the same way. Seven equal squares for Shani, three equal squares for Mel, but we don't want it draw another row for Shani and another row for Mel, the simple thing that we can do is just write a two in each box. And that is showing, ooh, I went to tape it down and shook the whole thing, look at that, Woo! Okay, so as you can see, we're doubling, did I do this thing crooked again to y'all? Look at that. Hopefully it's someone, this is somewhat entertaining watching me trying to figure out this sheet of paper. Okay, so we see that by putting a two in every box, we are doubling the ratio. If we were to triple the ratio or multiply it by three, we would put a three in each box. And notice that we do the same thing to Mel's box. So we see that the ratio is now, by simply drawing the simplified ratio of seven boxes to three boxes, now I put a two in each box and it becomes 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 to 2, 4, 6, 14 to 6. 
it's creating an equivalent ratio, which is the same thing as creating an equivalent fraction. Whatever you do to the one, you have to do the same thing to the other. Then we have some um, examples down here, okay, that I did for you. Let me tape that thing down so it doesn't move. Okay, so zoom it out just a bit so you can see that in there. All right, so it says that here are some equivalent ratios. So I have 6 to 11 and 42 to 88. Are these equivalent? How do we figure that out? Well, write them as fractions. So write them as fractions and you say, okay, well, let's look at our numerators. Let's compare our numerators. What do I multiply my numerator by to make that 42? Because remember, they're equivalent. Well, I know that to get my 6 to 42, I multiply it by 7. Okay, and I say, all right, let's check out to see if it's equivalent. So I go ahead and multiply my numerator by seven, and I get that 42, and then I multiply my denominator by seven. But I get 77, which means it is six elevenths is not equivalent to 42 88s. They're not equivalent. So you could check equivalency by making sure that if you multiply your numerator and denominator by the same number, you should get the other fraction that they're asking is equivalent or not. And then we have this one. Now this is odd because it has a zero as your information. We have zero to five and zero to 20. Are these equivalent? Well, you write it as a fraction. Your first number is your numerator. Your second number is your denominator. Numerator, denominator. And you check through multiplication. Well, what here we have zeros, so it's kind of hard. Anything you multiply by these zeros is going to get you a zero. So we check our bottom number. Then we say, well, what can I multiply five by to get to 20? You multiply it by four. And if I take my numerator and multiply it by four, I'm going to get zero. So zero fifths is equivalent to zero twentieths. Kind of crazy, huh? Kind of seems like if both the numerators are zero or both the denominators are zero, it's probably equivalent. All right, so there are no practice problems for tonight, but please make sure that you understand equivalent fractions and equivalent ratios. So when you come to class and we do our practice, practice problems and group work, that you are ready and prepared.